Before we begin, I'd just like to say thank you to my friends at Harris Saloon for supporting this podcast and for providing space at their corporate offices to record it. Harris Saloon's mission has as much to do with the restoration of men as it does with the business of haircutting. They try to make a difference in the lives of the thousands of men who come through their doors every week. Harris Saloon is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and if you've ever been interested in running your own business and want to work with great people, I would highly recommend you check out the Hair Saloon Franchise Opportunity. Go to HairSaloonFranchise.com to find out more information. That's HairSaloonFranchise.com. Also, a quick reminder to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already, and to please take two minutes to give us your review. And if you have a question or a comment you'd like to share with our listeners, go to Suzanne at the SuzanneVenkerShow.com. Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show. I'm your host, Suzanne Venker. I want to, I'm of course back with Andre Parody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I wanted to explain just a, just a touch to my listeners about the show. You, you remember kind of at the beginning of the year, I talked about shifting course a little bit because I was having a guest on, you know, pretty much, well, definitely every week. And I switched gears and, and, and decided to do my own thing with Andre. And I think, and I was just trying it out and I think I'm going to continue with this because it's going very well. And Andre is willing and happy to do so, which makes me so happy. Thank you, Andre. You're welcome. I'm loving it. This is it's, it's so fun. It's so like on, it's so real. I don't know. It's well, I'm getting a great, just great feedback from people about you and about the kind, the topics that we're discussing. I mean, of course, it's always one general topic, men and women, of course, but um, it's just it's just going really well. I'm very excited about it. Now, I am going to have a guest on. I'm going to shoot for once a month. So two weeks from now, I'm having Rolo Tomasi, who's the author of The Rational Male. So um, I'm kind of flipping things a little bit where I was always doing guests and occasionally doing this and just doing it the other way around. So that's kind works. of, that's the kind of plan going forward. We're good. Works for, works for me. Awesome. Okay. So today, um, <laughs> we're going to talk about dating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> More specifically, I have an article out today, um, entitled why dating is dead and what, to do about it. <laughs> and I opened it saying, Hey, I'm 51 years old. So I'm an eighties girl and romantic relationships were not complicated in our day. We're about the same age, right? Andre? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You met someone, you're attracted to him or her. This is what I wrote. You got along great. You started dating. The guy asked you out Then you went out at the end of the date. He dropped you off, gave you a kiss and said, I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> if one of the two parties wasn't feeling it, the relationship pretty much ended there. If they liked each other, it continued, and then over time, it would either fizzle out or if it or it didn't, and then if it didn't, the couple got married. The end. <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> dating dating one on one in our day, and of course, all, all serious, all kidding aside, I mean, it's it's not that way anymore. It's it's dramatically different and actually extremely problematic. Yeah. And I was looking back. I, I had done this three-part series last year on my um, website about this issue. And I I opened that with with saying what I believed is the most pressing issue of our time, and I I do believe that, is how to have a successful long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, marriage is the the goal, the focus, but I, I opened it up to say, look, even if you put marriage aside for a minute, we're having trouble just getting people to commit to just healthy relationships prior to marriage that are purpose-driven. So one of the things I was saying in this article today was that dating is no longer dating with purpose or courtship like in our day. It's really just passing the time, moving in and out of relationship after relationship until you get to this magical place we're okay. All of a sudden you're going to be ready to settle down and everything's just going to work out fine. And of course that's not happening at all, ever. at all, ever. ever. I mean, ever, uh, it, life just doesn't happen on our timetable like that, but we were taught that you're supposed to go out and have this life prior to marriage. That's big and so self-focused 
And then all of a sudden, so, you know, down the, line, down the line, it'll all work out. So, so one of the arguments that I made in this article is that there are, there are two main reasons, when we come back to the first one, um, two main reasons why dating is dead. And that is that women lowered their standards. That was number mm-hmm. one. And the second thing I wrote was that marriage is viewed as the grand finale rather than as the main event. In other words, oh, yeah. that in our day, marriage was the point, right? You looked forward to growing up and creating a family of your own. It was you were independent, you were on your own, you were excited to to do that, and family was the focus. And now it's completely reversed so that you forget about that, mm-hmm. and that's causing people to become more cynical, in my opinion, and more scarred because, as I said before, they're moving in and out of these relationships that have no end goal, all because of the way we're viewing marriage. That's my argument. I don't know Oy. what your take <laughs> is on that, but that's that's how I see it. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, the, it's a very simple thing. It's, I don't know if it's even the fact that women change, lower their standards. It's just that they were taught that marriage is secondary. Marriage is not the game. Marriage is not the point. You know, you have to be you first. You know, be big, be powerful, be masculine. Because right? yep. all this stuff is to be masculine. Back in the days, the point was to find somebody to love and build a family with. That was the point. So the focus was on that primarily from high school on. Like 16-year-old girls just wanted to find somebody to get married. As they pulled away from their fathers and their family, the natural pull is to find and start a family of your own. You know, a, 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 like your, 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 your own nest to start. Right. That was, na- that's, yeah, by the way, again, yeah, it's, it's nature. It's mm-hmm. nature. Mm-hmm. Women life, you know, women are more happy when they nest and, you know, um, nurture. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. You know what I mean? And it's, and they're not limited to this. We understand that. We're not saying that. But there's, a again, if you tap back into nature, what works best for both sexes, genders, no equality there again, right? It's, it's right. men do what they do, women do what they do. And in the, in the realm of civilization, culture, Society, marriage is essential for healthy families, for healthy kids to be to to grow into healthy human beings who mm-hmm. then go on and add to the world as opposed to, you know, being complete messes and not be able to, you know, connect and even bond with other humans and look what's going on today. Yeah. Look what's going on today. That's how that's why I called it the press the most pressing issue of our time, because everything mm-hmm. comes back to that. You look at yeah. all the social ills and you can trace them all back to the family unit. Right. And it's breakdown. Absolutely. I mean, I don't I don't understand how there can be anybody who doesn't get that. I mean, who, I know. Right. Who, who would argue against that? I mean, what is the opposite argument? Is there one? I don't think so. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, like what? Living with cats. I mean, we all know that I better. Mean, but I mean, like the, the idea that. We all have experiences with our own family dysfunction. Right. Um, sure. And how that affects us. So you would think that since we have, you know, we're basically the modern generation are products of divorce and they've seen, there's like two outcomes to that. On the one hand, you would think that you would look at that and say, and some people do for sure. My husband did. I don't ever want that for my life. I'm going to do it differently. Yeah. you got that segment. And then you have what I think really ends up being more of the majority. And that is repeating those patterns. And actually the research has shown that divorce begets divorce and right. that divorce. If you grew up in divorce, you're more likely to divorce because that is your frame of reference, unfortunately. And you haven't been shown how to build a relationship that lasts. You have no idea. So you're shooting in the dark all along, all along as you're growing up. How is it that when you get old enough to be in a relationship that we expect that you're going to all of a sudden know what to do? Especially, right. especially not only being products of divorce and not having the modeling, but on top of that, having a culture that com- completely eschews marriage and demonizes men and that whole business. So, so you you have this yeah. double whammy, and I don't understand how we expect women in particular to know how to proceed when it comes to this area of their lives. So, where do we start? I I coach men as well. I don't know if you do this, but uh, I mentor men different different angle of of mentoring that we do with relationships and women and marriage um but this this young guy 33 years old um who's struggling with the dating 
ways that we were just talking about. And and his girlfriend, who's 20 something, um, her mindset and her that generation's the millennials mindset is really there's no looking for marriage. It's just looking for somebody to be with right now, just so you're not alone. So they don't think future. They don't think long term. They don't think babies. They don't think marriage. They don't think of any of that. They just go, let me shack up with this guy as long as he's like, you know, helping me pay my bills. And, you know, but don't let him tell me what to do. And, you know, I have to be my own, you know, person and all that independence is just fine. But it's amazing to me. Like they have no sense of future. They have no sense of eventually they'll be 45, you know, and then no kids, no relationship, no family, no husband, nothing. And thinking, not thinking that the rest of their lives, actually the best part of the second half of our lives is that. Yeah, 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 my, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my the, own brother. Yeah. No, seriously, my own brother, before my kids were born, uh, I was with Nancy for a few years and they somehow thought we weren't going to have kids. Um, we had a plan anyway. He, and my own brother, older brother, says to me, are you not going to have kids? Like, are you crazy? Like, you know, seriously, like, think this through. He goes, do you know, what do you do after 45 when you have no kids? You know, it's just, you know, you think you to go to movies and dinner with your wife, you know, every Saturday, you know, and you just sit there, look at each other and have nothing to say. It goes, the best part of a full life is what the kids bring and then their, their, their friends coming over and that whole dynamic of a whole bunch of life and energy coming at you mm -hmm. into your life as your life slows down, it becomes the, like the shot on the arm of the, the whole the best part of your life is the second half. Right? Agreed. Completely agreed. And that is, and I mean, you've, you've hit it on the head. And the, of course, we don't tell young people this. And not only that, but of course, they don't like to think that far out. But they used to. People used to. And well, yeah. I've argued in past work that that has a lot to do with, you know, people's, of course, people matured at a far greater rate, far faster rate than they do today for, for obvious reasons. When you live through war, depression, um, less economically booming times, you um, grow up more, grow up faster. Mm -hmm. And that causes you to have to think forward, right? Have to think in the future. And young people have it too damn good. They have no reason to think beyond tomorrow. Mm. Interesting. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. And so it, that's a whole other separate issue of, of its own. Right. Uh, and it's hard to teach that when you live in a culture where everything's so immediate and you have your needs met at every moment. Um, and we don't live through a war in that sense. But um, yeah, second half of your life. So, so, and that's, of course, one of the arguments I make about when you're mapping out your life, particularly as a woman, but also for mm. young men, what do you want? Right? What do you want? How can you date? How? I don't understand dating without purpose. Dating right. without purpose is just passing the time, which would mm -hmm. be fine if, if, if you were casually dating in the true sense of the word. So here's what I mean. My mother was born in 1930. In her day, so that she would have been in the 50s, right? In the 50s, she'd be dating, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Probably end of 40s, end of 40s, um, into the 50s. And you dated a lot of men at once. <laughs> well, maybe not a lot, but a few at one time. That was normal to do. Mm -hmm. And the reason it was normal is because you weren't having sex with them. <laughs> if you take right. today's environment into that world, my mother's world, you... you you can't be having sex with several people at once. Well, you shouldn't be um, at once. So casual dating is is out the door. There's no way to date several men at once. Now, to be fair, they, you didn't do that in my day, in our day either, in the '80s. You know, we were definitely mm -hmm. not, you know, one one at a time. <laughs> but all I'm the only reason I'm saying that is, because, is to show the um, the scope of the options for dating and how much it's differed between her day and our day to the point where, okay, that might be a little extreme because we've, you know, that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's no longer, it's no longer a thing, but the point is casual dating is so difficult today because of that sex piece. I mean, let's just call it what mm -hmm. it is. Everything changed, which by the way, goes back to what I said when my first point was, um, when I said women have lowered their standards because as soon as women lowered their standards and decided to start having sex, quote unquote, like a man to be equal with men mm -hmm. and show that they could be just as promiscuous or whatever <laughs> as, 
as if that's something to aspire to. Thank you. Um, they, sure. That changed everything. Everything. I'll give you examples. So today's young people on campus, let's say, on college campuses. Yep. Back in the day, you could date around, like I said, and have actual dates and have relationships. It was about relationship formation. The sex part, if it came into play, came in after the relationship had been established. Right. Right? In our day. Now it's reversed. They put the cart before the horse. So the relationship never gets off the ground, which means, guess what? There mm -hmm. are no relationships. It's just having sex right. with people. Well, what the hell is that? I mean, nobody actually <laughs> wants that. And the only reason why it seems like, particularly on college campuses, that it's different for men. Well, it is different for women and men, young women and men, because they're so hormonal and will naturally gravitate toward that if that's what's available to them. But the but mm -hmm. the women, the young women whose standards are higher, they get screwed because the guy that they like has so many options. You're not going to be able to bring him to the commitment table. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does your marriage or love life feel hard? I get a lot of emails from readers who are struggling in their relationships. Unfortunately, the help an individual or couple needs can rarely be answered in a series of back and forth emails. For this reason, I offer coaching for individuals who are struggling in their relationships and for couples whose marriages feel stuck. Just go to SuzanneBenker.com and click on coaching at the top to sign up for a session with me. That's SuzanneBenker.com. The sex, you usually know I have this conversation without talking about what's happened with sex. So interesting enough, see, again, this... This new way, right? What, what happens is this. I see it all the time. The same like my clients. I have to teach them away from that. I, I, I coach them out of that because it's such a cultural phenomenon is that you meet some guy. No, that could be at any age, but women, older women do this as well. Like in the dating yeah. world, they meet a guy. They like the guy. They want to date. Okay, it goes well. You know, so the second date, it goes well. Nice. Third, fourth date. By fourth date, he likes her. She likes him. They start having sex. Are you sure they wait to the and fourth? Now, Okay. So many, right. you know, the ones who think, okay. the, the ones who think they're virtuous, do. There they actually you think go. They're virtuous. <laughs> they, 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 by fourth date, like I don't sleep with the guy the first date, but by fourth date, you know, and I go, okay. First of all, you don't know anything about this guy no. after fourth date. No. You don't know. You have four meals, if you know, if that. You know, walked around the beach for a couple hours, right? So, but get this. This is new data. I don't know if you know this, but in the psychology of males, in the psychology of humans, right? So for a woman in that situation, she thinks that by starting intimacy, you start the relationship, right? You think the intimacy triggers the relationship. So now after we have sex, we actually sort of have a relationship. We started the relationship. We're intimate, right? For males, psychologically, <laughs> when you sleep with him too fast, too soon, before he gets to like you, before he likes you, which means he has to know you beyond four dates, mm -hmm. right? Right. He has to like you, like emotionally likes you as a person, really attaching himself to mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. If you have sex before he likes you, his emotional involvement stops right there. Yep. Goosh, like yep. a curtain comes down. Boom. So if he likes you as much as he does after three weeks, he's never going to like you more. He's never going to like you more. He can't learn to like you more. You somehow shut the curtain on him emotionally getting invested. This is why these things go nowhere because it's really just a chick who put out after three mm -hmm, weeks and mm -hmm. he likes you fine, but he never gets to be enchanted invested by you. Or he invested. Never, he never gets invested. He has to, for male, the psychology of males, even today, young guys, this is sort of, this is in us. This is DNA stuff. This is how cultures were created for millennia is that a man has to prove to a woman that he's a good guy, that he's to be trusted, that he's going to you know, show up and he's going to do what he says he's going to do, that he's a guy that she can count on, that he's going to provide and protect. You know, he has to show his character for her to mm -hmm. trust him and then to store something with him. So he has to earn her love. Mm -hmm. He has to earn, earn her body. Yes. He has to earn it yes. in order for him to hold himself accountable yeah. and see her as valuable. What happens to guys, even young guys, this is crazy, but when you interview them, and we do, when the girl puts out Quickly, she's just, just one of those, another one of those, just another one of those. And they just completely lose traction with her. Like, she's just one of those. She's not virtuous enough. And the psychology, the back, again, they can't say this, right? It's not words in their heads. It's sort of a responding mechanism is that I can't trust her. She's the chick who's going to sleep with my best friend if she's mad at me. Like, they don't really have that thought process, but it's really like 
the caveman respond is, can't trust this chick. You know, she'll screw anybody. Obviously, you don't have to do anything much, right? And so she's just one of those. And then he goes and looks for another girl who is more virtuous and more virtuous. That's, and that's interestingly against what the culture is teaching, but that's the phenomenon. This is why these things go to nowhere. This Guys is... just don't have it for you. You're not worthy. You're not worth it. This, ouch. The, ouch. 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 But, ouch. Ouch. But critical to know uh, research-wise, because back in our day, you didn't need the research, did you? We knew. We knew. Right? We were taught. We were told. The culture supported it. It was obvious. You, you, <laughs> you went with it. I mean, it was just so much more common sense and pro-biology back in those days instead but, of all this but, cultural crap. So now we've got what you just laid out. Um, as I think a brilliant way to help young people get it because they're never going to get it. They need to understand how that works. Like you just described it. And I think that's far more, um, powerful than, than just saying, just do it or don't do it or whatever. So do you find mm -hmm. that this is news to people when you pass it on? Yeah. People? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because it resonates. I'm going to tell you, it resonates. Guys just instantly know it. Yes. Right? Yes. Bring that up. They go, well, yeah. They, well, yeah. They don't know why they know it. They just know it. They know how they're it just, right. It, it resonates, right? And the women go, hmm. You know, I, again, it taps into like an, a, an inner knowing. And, and you know, the ones who, this is very simple, right? Like, And it's also a way of sorting out the guys, right? Because if some guys will try to shame women out of not having quick sex because yes. like, what are you, you know, yeah. you're, you're a nun, you know, mm -hmm. and like, what kind of girl are you? Like, you know, if you really care for me, I don't, I don't get involved with women on the, in, on, guys will say this, shame women into sex. I don't date women unless I know we're sexually compatible. So they want to have <laughs> sex right away. No, no, seriously. They'll shame I know, because I've heard it. I know. Guys, guys are used to getting it left, yep. right, and yes. center without doing anything. Right. So now they expect it. Right. Ladies, ladies, are you waking up to this yet? Like, yeah. They expect you to put out so they could just move on to the next chick because you're just another one of those. What, not, what we know works with man is to not put out. Mm -hmm. And then when he comes at you with, you know, well, come on, right? You go, well, I like you too. I really, really like you. I'd love to have, you know, I'd love to roll around with you. I feel it. However, I don't have sex with men until I know where your plans are, where this is going. Absolutely. And he goes, oh, well. And so what happens with, get this, in the first few days, the guy who just wants to have sex moves on. Good for you. The guy who expected you to put out but sort of has more of a, a natural sort of like, whoa. That chick has got boundaries. Wow, look, that goes something. Wow, I gave her all of that and she resisted. Mm. Now he's curious. Now you went up in value. You, you see it? You put, like, you put that so much better than I could. I've tried to say this over <laughs> and over in my writing. I'm not sure I uh, as as successful as you are in the way you phrase it. Plus, you're a guy, so I think it makes right. I think it's more I powerful could, coming right. from you. Yeah. But that's it, right? And yeah. the next thing is. They, and the funny thing is they come back. So, you know, this is how you sort out the guys because they all want to have sex. It's almost a test. If you can let yeah, them have sex, exactly. you just want those. Like, you're never going to be valuable for him to trust and trying to build a life with. It's not going to. So even the good guys also have sex. So as you hold your boundary as a woman, by the way, that's that's the same way in nature. The female runs the show. The female are the yep. gatekeepers yep. Yep. of sex. So all you have to do is that. Be the gatekeeper. It's very simple. And the guy who just wants to have sex will go away. The guy who's actually looking for a woman to build something with go, oh, darn. Right. It's a great sorting mechanism. I was look trying to look yeah, at her. I was trying oh. to explain this and, to younger people because they said, well, what do I do? Because he'll just go have sex with, with you know. That's fine. Julie Let over him. there. Well, yeah, exactly. Let him. That's, Let him. that's, that's a fine. great. That's what he wants. That's how you sort it out. You, 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 he saved you. <laughs> he saved you. Really? Yeah. That's right. Or thing, she right? saved you. I guess. So, but even the guys who are players will respond to this. When you resist, they go, whoa. You know, and then yeah. I've seen players come around to commit to a woman because, oh, my God, they've never met a girl like this ever. Yeah, exactly. This girl cannot be played. This not it cannot be, like, you know, played out of her pants. This girl cannot has yes. boundaries. This girl knows she is. This girl is solid. This girl I can trust. And that's where her power lies. Hello. Right? That's where the power and lies. It's not what's between you your what legs. It's what. You're so cool. Yes. Anybody, anybody can open their legs. Anybody, any old anybody Jeez. can do that. This is this, this is where the power is. And for guys, the next thought is this. 
again, still, always, it's incredible for me to watch every time when I just when they put it, you know, they put it apply appropriately. As you as you hold your boundaries as a woman, right? And the guy goes, I've never met a girl like this ever. Right? Not only can I trust her, he actually thinks he's never gonna meet somebody like you ever again. So what does he do? <laughs> Be my girlfriend. Be my girlfriend. I was afraid to lose you. Bam. That's how this whole thing works. Now, let me ask you something because you the, you work what what's the age group? I tend to get 30 and 40 th mostly 30s and 40s. Um Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So, do you um what I'm trying to say is it won't necessarily work out that way for young people, for a young boy. So, in other words, a 20-year-old boy may not respond the way you just said as well as a 26-year-old boy. Yeah, a young right. man, I should say. Um, because developmentally, they're not. They might go. More of them might go to the girl who's going to put out than the than the what the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So it'll take them aging before they are maturing before they can uh, right. respond those the way you'd ideally want them to. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yes, those are stages of life, you know. And part of what happens with teenage men, boys into young men is they actually create their identity through their sexuality. Like, you know, what kind of girl can I get? What kind of, how many girls can I get, right? There's a whole identity building within that that time, in, you know, which is a terrible thing. I get it, right? Because yeah. in a lot of, it, with the men will be reckless and mm -hmm. restless with their sexuality and will ruin a lot of girls who just want to find a boyfriend and settle yeah. at 16, 17, 18. But these guys just have their penis power is yeah. so overpowering yeah. that they sort of, right? So they're reckless and restless mm -hmm. and this, dangerous and they ruin and this with that most of the hurt between men and women will start now the women learn not to trust women learn that the guys lie women learn that the guys don't mean what they say that you know blah blah she feels taken she feels strong okay that lasts till about 25 if, if even even by 25 most guys have a sense of that's not cool right it's really the teenage years are they're really stupid right it's just yeah. about that yep but a guy, a normal guy, quickly understands that you ruin a woman when you do this, you hurt women when you do this, and they go one at a time. They go one at a time. They still don't want to necessarily commit long term, but they'll have a girlfriend, and they'll be yeah. with a girlfriend, and they'll want a steady girlfriend and somebody to like, you know, be able to have some sense of, of relationship with. That they don't know who's going to lead. Yeah, like really it may not be married. Far, right, right. right. But, you know, but they're still in that. They right. really just, again, but, and that only could take place if you hold, if you're the gatekeeper, ladies. Yeah. It's that, it won't start without you holding your boundaries <laughs> sexually, period. It's just, it's so, it's so basic. So I get really frustrated when I talk about it with people because it really was so obvious up until very recently. Mm -hmm. And yep. we so quickly, it just astounds me that how quickly we lost this so that young women, as a rule, don't get this and they don't know it. Well, the sexual revolution with the pill kind of liberated women yeah. from the danger of sex you True. Know, through pregnancy and all that stuff. So that was like an avalanche of it like, was. floodgates. It was, which I've written about extensively. But this, it feels like this is even different. For young people today, it, we're so far removed from understanding the basics of how it works to attract a long-term mate. Yeah. Um, birth control or no birth control, just like the psychology of it. So anyway, so that so that was my argument well, in, the, in the article one more, today. One yeah. more piece that I want to add here that you actually you know, mentioned in the piece is that the price to pay for this right so get this again psychological research is that to a woman a girl a young woman whatever any woman every time you get involved and have sex with a guy just for the fun of it just for the hell of it just for now just for a couple of months just because whatever without right every time you have sex with a man a piece of you goes with him when he leaves a piece of your heart gets torn off and he walks away with it and that is eventually what's very, very hurtful because in the in the name of this cultural belief that, you know, you get to like find out what you like and have mm -hmm. sex with a bunch of guys to figure out your way. And, mm -hmm. and then only in that, you'll find maybe the guy you want to marry thinking that's going to, it's kind of like you sort of, you know, building yourself up to know what you like. It's the exact opposite. You're exactly. touring apart your insides and your love and your ability to mm -hmm. trust by hooking up with a bunch of guys who just want a piece of your butt. I didn't want to say the word here. No, but. you can say butt. 
Yeah, I do. Well, I didn't want to say ass, oh, <laughs> you know, because oh. really what they want, you're a piece yeah. of ass right. that I can't say, but you could edit that. No, show you, you can say it. My point, yeah, <laughs> well, like so that. there you go. So if you're just a piece of ass, yes. you know what I mean? Yep. And again, and, you know, women don't do well with the hookup mm -mm. culture. It eats them alive and they feel cheap, eventually used and they are. And Stop they it. are. And when the and the reason why they're able to do it pretty much in a clueless in clueless fashion, in my opinion, is because with so many people around them doing it, they are not forced to say or think, oh, this isn't normal behavior. That it has been right. so normalized. And at that age, yep. whatever yep. the people are doing around you, that is normal to them. And so yep. it takes years of of being scarred you know and understanding the repercussions of that down the road before they ever get it that's unfortunate and that has yeah. everything to do with what we uh, accept they, as, as the norm yeah. you know what the culture does yeah. that's why and, it's so significant and being 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 scarred is not something that you want to learn later on that is dangerous you know you want to catch it before yeah. all that because you know again you're 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 gonna you're going to wrap up your heart in the, the tight little bubble that nobody can access because you can't trust people who have taken advantage of you because that's what it feels like ultimately. By the way, the second, the biggest reason why this is happening, again, when we do research, even young women in college, most of them can't be loose like this sexually without getting drunk. Oh, they so can't? That's all, yeah, I didn't get into that, but that's a that's, whole that's how other it starts. conversation. That's how it's, they, yeah, they, 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 the they, only in, reason in the, they can do it is because they're drunk. If if you remove yeah, that no, alcohol, they, they literally they, wouldn't be able to do it. Right, and they say that out loud the yeah. next day. So I had to, I had yeah. to get drunk to hook so, up with that guy. He was cute, I mean, but I just like. <laughs> and you think that would tell you something right there? <laughs> do you not realize what you my, just said? I'm holding my I'm holding my head right, all the time. <laughs> So there it is. I'm just saying. This is, is this this is this is better. This is modern. This is good. This is terrible. No, it's it's it's, it's a and, nightmare. It's, it's a destroying nightmare. women, and, and it's allowing men to stay pigs, mm -hmm. and it keeps us from stepping up. You keep men basic when you do that with them. Yes, exactly, exactly, and that goes back to understanding that that women. Uh, you know, are the leaders when it comes to where a relationship is going to go and how it's going to go. And um, they're not, again, taught that that's, that that's so. Um, so one of the answers that I gave after identifying, you know, that dating is a mess um, and that people are struggling with just how to build a relationship at all, the answer I gave was parenting. That ultimately, since it's not going to come from the culture, and that includes schools, literally, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm missing something, but to me, the only option out of this is parents and what mm -hmm. they are parents and what they're going to teach their children. So my argument was, look, prepare your sons and daughters to be relationship material, right? And how do you do that? And how do you do that? So for one... The, the single most important thing is to teach them what the culture won't. So you yes. have to, which is exact. So in order to teach them what you, well, there's several ways of doing it. That's one. The other is of course to, uh, this is a bigger issue than it sounds when I'm saying it, but stay married, <laughs> stay married. Don't get divorced. Obviously. And that's a conversation in itself um, to model it and to actively fight the culture every step of the way. And that's a really tall order because a lot of people, first of all, it's hard. It's hard because you got to be vigilant and know what's going on and then take the time to counteract it. And you also have to work on your own marriage and make that the number one priority in your life and focus so that you can model mm -hmm. something that works for them. So these are big things. But in my book, I literally see no other way out. I don't know where it would come from if it's not from the parents. There is nowhere else, else to go. Right. Absolutely. You know, since the 70s, you know, they, was that I think 70% of the kids in my, my, my son's school are divorced. Did you say 70? You know, and it, it was 70%. 70% in your kids and your son's No, I'm not class? sure if it's, yeah, it's this class. Oh, my God. Now, get this, and it, and I'm not sure this is just local. I mean, this, this that's this class, right? Um I was teaching at a, at a college just about a month and a half ago, 
And this is a small class, about 13 girls, and all of them, except one, were the parents, their parents were divorced. All of them. 14 girls. Not one. Only, I mean, one had a couple that stayed together. So this is the role modeling, right? Like, so marriage doesn't last. Marriage is dangerous. Marriage, mar you know, marriage ends up in, in divorce. So they, why would they want that? Why would they, you know, not only they have nothing to model, but the pain, the result is that. Pain is so. And actually, that that was that was one of my answers, and I put it for a separate podcast because I feel oh, like sorry. It, no, 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 no. It's okay to talk about it. It's just I just just FYI for people who are listening. Um, I, mm. I scheduled that for our, our next podcast is to talk away about, um, divorce and the four ways to avoid it <laughs> because nice. that is really, in my opinion, the beginning of how this would ever potentially be turned around. Because if you don't have a model for that every day growing up, um, you are shooting blanks. There's just no other question. There's just no other takeaway from that. And so that, and that's, that's, that's just in terms of like how to do it. But then you also have the scarring from that and what that means for Europe, which is what you're talking about, your ability to bring mm -hmm. um, your full self to the table um, yourself, which is, so anyway, so that's, we're going to do a whole podcast okay, just nice. on that. That's All a, right. That's, that's a big one. Yeah, that's it's a, a big one big. because, and here's a statistic I wanted to throw out. I don't know if people have this, but over half of 18 to 34 year olds at present, over half of 18 mm -hmm. to 34 year olds right now have no steady partner at all. <laughs> you really Surprise. have to think about that statistic and how that compares to all the generations in the past. 18 mm -hmm. to 34. Now you could say, oh, 18, 19, that's all right. Okay. Well, that's fine. Once you get into all throughout your 20s up to the age of 34, no steady partner at all. This is an enormous, enormous um, departure from the way it has always been. So the, that tells you everything with respect to relationships that you need to know, that you don't even have a partner. We're not even talking about not, not being married, although that's part of it. You don't even have a partner, which means you're single. So you have 18 to 34-year-olds, 30 over half of whom are currently single. I mean, t that's why your business and my business <laughs> isn't going right. to go anywhere. <laughs> that's that's one good thing, but it's not a good thing, of course. We don't want right. that. Um, but that's that's where we are. I mean, I have you know, this research that women who are in college because they're so busy becoming, you know, like strong, independent, and powerful, purposely avoid relationships because they don't want to be distracted. They, they yes. Purpose, oh, yes. So, purposely avoid relationships. So they go, I don't want no man. And they go to the party on Saturday, they get drunk and have a hookup just because it gives them a little feel of like they're being, you know, they're attractive or somewhat desired by somebody yep. and then just delete it the next day and then go back to studying. And, you know, yeah, no, they're so doing it to themselves. I they're mean, doing it to themselves. I mean, in the name of, you know, strong, independent, and powerful. Again, a, a, a cultural push into making women more masculine mm -hmm. that's healthy for them. Is more masculine is healthy for them. That's there was a uh, psychologist and a professor at University of Chicago, Alexandra Alexandra Salomon, who said that her undergraduates try very hard not to fall in love mm -hmm. because it will interfere with their career plans. I mean, she went on the record saying it to the right. point where she started a um, dating and marriage class. This is the University of mm -hmm. Chicago. I mean, and this yeah, is this just the beginning of it. I mean, they need them all over the country in college right, campuses right. because it starts in college when you start mapping yeah. out your life. Right. It was, it was the focus, you know, and the focus is being masculine, being a badass, yep. you know, just conquering whatever. And then the price to pay is, well, when you and I get to see. Yeah. Yeah. Way down the line. Right? Way down. Yeah. Way down the right. line. But by then it's too late. But most do you ever, all, do you have a lot of, um, I get a lot of people. In fact, wait a minute. I was going to save this, but. I don't need to know because it goes right into it. She wanted to be, she asked to remain anonymous, so I won't use even her first name. Is it email? Uh, it's an email. And um, this is it just speaks to exactly what you just said, so that's why I'm going to read it. Um, Hi, Suzanne. I've been listening to the show since its inception, yada, yada. My husband and I are in a gender reversal situation. Um, I work and make a great salary in the medical field. My husband stays home with a young child. 
Mm. Uh, we were unaware of what switching gender roles would do to our relationship. Uh, and we're wondering, uh, wanted to see if what you and or Andre have any other advice if you're stuck all re- in a gender role reversal situation down the line. So in other words, you were just saying, you know, y- y- you're not thinking about this until all of a sudden down the road and then you come to see Andre or Suzanne. What, <clears throat> what do you say to people who, in fact, I was just asked about this on a radio interview last night and it, I, I didn't have really, very, I had to come up with something really positive to say. What do you do with the people where this is going to be harsh, but the ship has sailed and you've gotten yourself into a situation now that you can't extricate yourself because it's been, it's been years in the making. Right. Well, I, let me just say, first of all, yeah. I, I always personally, I'm very optimistic and I always try to take each situation on its own. And mm-hmm. I believe anything's fixable if you are willing to do it, but it might require, or usually does require huge, a huge overhaul in your life and whether or not you're willing to do that is another thing. So I don't like to say you're screwed. Um, but it depends no. on what the topic is. If you're talking about a 40 year old, who's not going to have children. Well, I can't undo that. You know, if you, right. yeah. But if you're talking about having this gender role situation and you're already in it, do you have a lot of people who ask you, how do I get out of that or switch it? Back yeah, or, I, yeah. F- for me, what I what's you the know, word you use? I love the word you use. Recalibrate. Recalibrate. Yeah. You know, recalibrate your dynamic. So do you get different results and you feel different and better and more in line with your essence, whether you're a male or a woman, a female? This this is nature again that we're neglecting here. You could flip the script. So what's the price you wanted to pay to flip the script on nature? You could do it for a while. Eventually, nature wins. Nature wins every time. Right? You're not going to win this. You're going to you're not going to go against the flow of life and think you're going to win. So, what I do with these people when they in in enough pain that they will come up to me or you and say, "What now? This is not working. I'm dying," you know, and he's not okay. We're not okay. My position is always, "Do you want to fix it?" Like not you, but him as well. Both of you. As long as both of you want to fix it. We can fix it. And all of that is, is again, relearning new habits, understanding the psychology of the physiology of a woman physically and chemically and why not pushing so hard, not fighting, not controlling is better for you long term on your nervous system, on your energy, right? On on your your happiness, you write down to your happiness, so joyful to get up in the morning as opposed to, ugh. Right. Yep. And the same with the guy, the physiology of a male and what makes men feel good is to conquer and take charge of and make things happen and provide and protect. Right. Take care of the family that brings men a huge amount of joy and yes. purpose. That's why know? they react it, differently to it than we do when uh, we do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, again, so if you if you guys are realizing this isn't working, but you want to fix it, you you're invested together. You have kids, you have a family, you have a life. Let's learn to flip back to what works better. And so now we have to create new habits, right, where they ba- basically has to learn to step back more into his masculine, whether he let that go for too long and her back in her feminine. And we know that the brain, we used to think the brain was like you were stuck with the brain you were born with. But we now know the brain is extremely flexible. The plasticity of the brain mm-hmm. could learn and relearn anything and everything. You could change your yep. life by changing your habits. Yep. So that's all it is. We go to work, but it's like it's a long journey because it's like, you know, like turning a boat away from an iceberg. You got to grab the wheel and crank it, but it doesn't move very fast, right? So for yeah, it to change right. direction. I was just going to say, it's going to take, you've got to be really you know, patient yeah, you because have to it's hold not going to be overnight. Yeah, you have to hold that rudder and just hold on with both hands and just watch the boat turn really, really, really <laughs> slowly. I'm so glad you said that because I was just thinking about that yesterday, how much yeah. I cannot get across to people this is not overnight. You could be looking at a minimum of one year. No, to, no. I mean, it, it, yeah. it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it takes one year to pretty, like, actually have the boat move enough slowly month to month in a different direction that at the end of a year, 12 months or so, you're dead on, by the way, that, that now the boat is actually dry and pointing the right direction and moving towards the right direction. But it takes holding, like hanging on that rudder hard I mean, there's and a- putting... Because there's a combination of, there's a combination of, like you said, getting rid of daily habits, changing your mindset, which can take, again, not overnight at all, especially if it's been there mm-hmm. since birth. 
<laughs> um, so <laughs> habits, mindset, and then whatever your uh, technical circumstances are, you've got to change those. So if, you know, like it, it is legitimately very difficult. I have uh, a couple who one, as I said, was, has been home for so many years, the husband, and she's big wig now. That's going to take some, again, can be done, but you're looking at really having to change your life to the, to a degree where you're going to have to make some professional decisions here. That's going to take some time as well. So very slow mm -hmm. for sure. Um, very slow. Uh, do you but more, uh, immensely rewarding? Immensely rewarding once it's finally accomplished, no question. And that's that's the part that that's the exciting part. You know, you want to get people when they're really passionate and they experience it, and then they can pass it on to the next person, right? Once you see it and experience it, and I like, you know, we always talk about that visual for for you in particular since you're a dancer. I wish we had some sort of visual that showed like a video where where a man and a woman are trying to dance, but they're just. <laughs> They're stepping over each other and it's not working stepping. at all. And then juxtapose that next to yeah. one where it's this beautiful ballroom dancing that you and your wife do, let's say, yeah. and say, now this is a visual for what your relationship can go from this to this. And when you get to this, the other thing, oh my Lordy, you are never going to want to go back. All right. And, and again, you know, what does it take to make a good dancing couple? Just practice. Yeah. Do it a little bit every day. Do a little bit every day. And you go yeah. from stepping on each other's toes and elbows in the face and knees to the groin. <laughs> in the yeah. realm of dancing, yeah. that's what happens. But but as you do it every day a little bit, then you get practice and then you get to move back into your 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 more traditional role mm -hmm. that feels good, right? Men love it when you know you trust them to take you for a spin. Women yeah. get to let go when they trust the guy who takes you for a spin. It's so you great. know, it's it's it's, so great. it's a beautiful, it's so beautiful great. thing, right? But it takes practice. So it's just like if you can learn to salsa mm -hmm. dance tomorrow, you're gonna be clunky until you yeah. practice a lot. So yeah. that's all it is. So you, you just practice new habits in order for the relationship to grow back into where you want it to be. And we now know there's the things that work better on both sides to make that bond, that connection, that magnetism, that energy, sensual, sexual, that keeps us together how that works. I thought of a great uh, example of um, what you just said recently to drive home the differences between a, a man and a woman of how desperately she needs romance and how desperately he needs sex mm -hmm. and how those two <laughs> and that what you're shooting for is actually the same thing. Like, so the end result is the same. Yeah. But the right. getting there, so for example, we know a man can have sex at the drop of a hat and they don't need all that foreplay, right? So that's, it's not a, it's nothing to resent or be angry about on either person's part because he might be frustrated because she needs all this beforehand stuff. Um, and that might be frustrating for him. But when you understand that about each other and actually cater to it so that maybe he's romancing when he doesn't feel like it, and that don't mean you have to take your wife out to dinner every time you want to have sex but you know set the stage a little bit um mm -hmm. we're we're really responsive to music and environment and that's just that whole romantic piece i mean that's why women eat up the rom-coms right if they tap into that they will have a more receptive woman and in the same way a woman will need to sometimes have sex with her husband when she's not necessarily initially in the mood or or do it in a way that doesn't require the foreplay and that's going to meet his needs. And when you're both doing that, there's such a um, natural, I mean, it's, it's sort of like taking you back to the beginning before the kids came along, right? <laughs> when you naturally did right. those sort of things because you had the time and the space to create that environment for romance. And then you notice that over time, the less you do that for your woman, your wife, the more closed she's going to be. And it's not trying to be, she's not trying to be difficult about it, but it, it's really hard for her physiologically to get into yeah. that place pre-kid if you don't set the stage, you know? So that's like an example I think a lot of people can relate to that's such an obvious male-female difference that if you just do that one thing, you're going to find the bedroom a much better place to be. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, I, I use a very simple little formula to explain this. You know, it kind of gets to the point where, you know, again, we're completely in opposition when most everything has been in women. So as long as you get that, you understand that the mechanism is different. So a woman has to feel connected to her man to open up to him. Yeah, precisely. A man 
Right? So a woman has to feel connected to a man to open up to him sexually. Excuse me, just me pause, which is why when there's a fight or any kind of anything going on at all, she cannot turn it off. Of she's course. just going to focus in on that thing. She can't she, let it go. She's, a, yeah. she's actually stuck there, yes. not feeling bad. So yes. she can't yes. open up because Correct. she's feeling bad. She's stuck I speak there. from experience. Just, yes. Well, and you know, <laughs> your feelings are the truest thing about you in the moment. Like yes. whatever you feel in the moment, you can't. <laughs> you can't talk yourself out of that. You can't negotiate that. It's just how you feel. I like, finally get that as a male. Like, because guys will say, why do you let that bother you? You know, <laughs> like, what gets, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing because I went to the grocery store with my husband yesterday and we had some little really minor tiff. It was nothing. But I was in this, you know, bad mood instead of a good one. And I ran in to get coffee. And I was supposed to get it for both of us. And I only got my coffee. <laughs> oh, wow. And when I came back, he goes, S you were mad at me. So you're like, damn it, I'm not going to get him the coffee. And that was and I said, no, I didn't think that at all. He's like, yes, it was in your subconscious because you were so mad you couldn't turn it off. It was really yep. funny. Sorry. Go ahead. But it's just factual, right? So a woman has to feel connected you know, to open up, men actually have to connect to open up. Correct. Yes. Ex say that you know again I mean? now. So pe yeah, I know, but say it again slowly so, so people. A woman has to feel sensually connected to her man to open up sexually. A man opens up emotionally through his body with sexuality first. So when the man needs the sex to open up and become heart centered, a woman has to be connected first to have sex to meet him. So simple. Two different mechanisms. So this Two is why men always want to have sex and women yes. don't understand that it yes. is about the body. Sex. Yes. It's just through our bodies yep. is when we get to our hearts. You have to be in your heart first to, to get into your body. And so it's just a backwards mechanism. It's fantastic when you get it. It's not it's, that hard. It's not that hard. It's and, not that hard. And lest women need proof, there's no better time to catch your guy than after he's had sex with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is putty in your hands. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you, you know, uh, take advantage of that in any way i'm just saying he no, is he'll never be as soft emotion like well, just it, go ahead you can say it, it. you're a guy you it say it, it better it is hard is it is hard i had yeah. a client who's like you know a guy a guy was super macho and you know like a guy so macho guys don't talk so much macho guys are hard to connect with because they, they don't want to hear about your day at the end of the day they just want to like you know like sort of numb out right this is factual masculine men are hard to to connect with for women who want to connect with them all the time and feel safe. So she has this problem, like, how do I get him to talk to me? I don't know what he's thinking. And he's just sort of like kind of, you know, tired and I get that, but it's hard for me to just like not be able to, ah, ah, how do I, how do I, how do I? And I go, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, what does he want? He wants to get close to you. Let him get close to you, see what happens. And I remember she called me like, I think a day later, she's like, oh my God, you don't understand. I know when to talk to him now. He's so available. Right after sex. Anything it's, I want. Right it's after sex. Magic. You, you it respond. is absolutely magic. Yeah. Right. So again, so know what works, right? It's not just it the, the guy doesn't want just the sex for the sex sake. It's right. how we get to our or to feel something. That's how we get into our hearts when you like us better. Right? Yep. It's just that is. You're the other way around. We get it. So we both have to come in the middle there yeah. to understand this and manage it and manage it so it works better. But this woman, right? Oh, after yeah. sex, he's amazing. I can ask him anything. He's right there. He just wants to talk. You would and think that would make more women not be so uh, disturbed by the idea of having sex more often when you necessarily don't want to. Just right. for that alone. But I don't know. Sure I don't enough. Know. But you like... have to even experience that, I think, yeah. right? Yes. For you, for, again, for you, if you don't feel good, if you don't feel yeah. like you feel that he's not connecting to you, it's hard to do it. Definitely. But then... You know, meet him in the middle. Oh, win-win. Both sides. Both sides. Just saying. It's not that hard. No, it's not. It's, that not. Hard. it's not. But we have to keep saying it, Andre, over and over in different ways every week until people I get it. Maybe the podcast will just never go away. <laughs> <Just keep saying. laughs> I say this every day, every week, every client, every time. It's not that hard. No. You just have to know how. Bingo. Right? Bingo. And just, like, just investigate what works. Why? How? Okay, so we got a little bit away from dating, but I think the, did, the chunk huh? of it was on that, and that's great, and that was a fine segue, and it, it's all good. So hopefully people have some good takeaways about this whole you know, modern dating scene, especially if, you have, if you're as, as old as Andre <laughs> and I are, and you have um, older kids, or young adults, I, for children, I should yeah. say. Um, yeah. So if it doesn't apply to you, it might apply to your kids. But at any rate, so yeah, when we come back, I'd like to... Um, Focus on, on divorce, because I think that 
you, it just needs its own it needs its own episode yeah. for that. It's just too big. So we'll do that. Maybe even two. Maybe yeah, even maybe two. even two. Yeah, maybe even two. Okay, Andre, awesome. So thanks for thanks for coming in. We'll um talk to you next week. Anytime, Donnie. Okay. Thanks, Andre. Okay. Bye bye. Well, that wraps up another edition of the Suzanne Venker Show. Don't forget to tune in next week when Andre and I talk once again about the state of men and women in America today. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. And if you have a question or comment for me, you can email me at Suzanne at the Suzanne Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week. 